Hello my beautiful friends, it's Amanda here and today we're doing a little BYOP with me video. If you have no idea what that means, BYOP stands for build your own palette and today I want to build my own palette inspired by the new Natasha Denona pastel palette that's coming out. If you haven't seen it yet, I'll put a picture up here for you. It actually looks very bright and colorful. These are the type of pastels that I enjoy more. Kind of reminds me of the Lost in Los Angeles palette from BH Cosmetics. I like to see more bright, almost like neon leaning pastels versus the little watercolor like milky pastels. Both are beautiful, it's just my personal preference to go with a brighter, more intense color. Natasha Denona palettes are pretty pricey and it's not like I don't shell out a lot of money for makeup products because I do, but I do like to try to recreate these really pricey palettes with what I already have in my collection. I think it's fun, it inspires me to use the things that I already have and I want to encourage you to try that out too. If you're like me and you have a big makeup collection, you may be able to pull the colors from a new product that you're interested in from what you already have. So this video isn't so much about encouraging you to go out and buy these exact shades that I'm pulling for my palette inspiration because honestly I may end up using things that are discontinued or sold out or whatever it may be. It's more to just encourage you to try something like this with what you already have in your collection as well. And if you don't have a whole lot of singles like I do, maybe you can pull shades from palettes or even take a look at your blushes and your highlighters. Maybe you can pull those into your color story as well. It's all about just having fun, getting inspired, and making sure that we're still using the things that we already have in our collection because I don't know about you, I do tend to buy a lot of new releases, but it's sort of my job to do that and to review things. So I like to use these BYOP videos as a reminder for all of us that, you know, you don't necessarily have to buy every single new thing that comes out. Maybe you already have something similar or maybe you'll create something that you love even more if you wanna tweak a color story. Or maybe you see this Natasha Denona palette and you love it and you run out and buy it and that's, perfectly valid too. Obviously there's no makeup judgment going on here. So let's get to the fun part. Let's start putting our inspired palette together now. The very first thing I want to do is give you a glimpse of the photos that I'm using to build my palette. I like to use a picture of the palette itself and pictures of swatches and I try to use the brand's photos when I can just... I know there's never a perfect lighting situation, there's never a perfect editing situation, but this seems to give me the most consistent results. So these are the two pictures that I'm using when I am choosing shades for my palette. I'm going to be pulling shadows from my entire collection, so ColourPop, Terra Moons, Lethal, and Sydney Grace are going to be heavily featured. Those are the ones that I have the most singles from. And I'm just going to go through and pull out shades that I think are going to be the closest match. And then we'll swatch them. I'm not going to show you the entire process because as you can see, this video is already pretty long. There's a lot that goes into finding kind of dupes, I guess, is what we're doing. It's not going to be a perfect dupe. This first shade, this pink shade in the palette is for sure the one that gave me the most grief trying to find the right shade. For all the pink shadows that I have, as I was swatching them, some of them were just way too bright, too dark, too warm, too peachy. This shadow in the palette really appears to be a very mid-tone, very neutral pink, and I really did struggle to find the right shadow. Based on just the appearance in the pan, I pulled these first three, well, the appearance of the photo of the pan. Making Moves is too orange. These two are just too bright. They're too dark. So I pulled some lighter shades. These two 
Wait For It and Flower Boy. And these two were just far too orangey. They were definitely more peach than pink. And I was really looking for something more neutral, like almost a rosy cool tone. Flower Boy is kind of as close as it gets right now. And I was very frustrated by struggling this much with the first shade. So I decided to just put one of these shades in as a placeholder and then go back to it after I had been combing through my singles a little bit more. So we're going to go back to the first shade later, but for now we're going to look for this shifty white pink duochrome type of shade. In the picture of the pan, you can tell it's a really light white pink icy duochrome, but in the swatch, it looks like a really, really frosty pale pink. So we kind of have to shoot in between those two really, I think, to get the best outcome. I pulled a couple of ColourPop singles, Tickled and Cloud are both from ColourPop, Andromeda is a Terra Moons shadow, and it is really really shifty, super beautiful. You'll see here that the swatch looks so much like the picture of the pan from the Natasha palette. And then I also grabbed this one called Evoke, which is a shifty icy pink shade, but it doesn't quite have that white gold flip. So Andromeda seems perfect. Honestly, it looks better than the Natasha Denota shadow. And that's going to happen a couple of times, I'll tell you, throughout this video as I sort of substitute something that I like even better. And that's why this isn't a perfect dupe. But, you know, it gives the same vibe, same feeling. We're going to get the same looks. And now we're going to look for this sort of blue green. It's not quite a forest green. It's got this bit of a minty shimmer to it in the swatch. It's definitely a really interesting green shade. I don't know that I would call this a pastel, but that does happen a couple times in this palette, especially that red right in the middle. That's neither here nor there. We're gonna look for this green shade. I decided to cast the net pretty wide for this one because this does seem like a very unique color based on the photo. So I pulled some more green leaning options, some more blue leaning options. I really just wanted to swatch them on my arm and see what they look like because some shadows really will surprise you, especially with the way that they shift. This shadow called Dive from Sydney Grace ended up being really the perfect shadow for this particular palette. Up and Up is too pale and too warm green, and then Slayfair is clearly way too blue. Beyond Apollo is too dark and just not really the right color, so Dive is perfect. Now we're going to look for this matte purple shade, and I have a bunch of options that I felt like really fit this particular color. I know nobody's surprised that I have a bunch of purple eyeshadow options, so I just settled on three to swatch at first, and I felt like I could get the right shade here. KK and 143 are both from ColourPop, and the shade Undone is from Lethal Cosmetics. In the end, I think the shade KK is a little bit too pinky and definitely too light for what I'm looking for. I was more torn between Undone and 143, but I do think Undone is a little bit cooler. It's a little bit more of a blue-based purple. And this palette is calling for something a little bit more warm and reddish. So I decided to go with 143 for this shade. We're closing out the top row now. We're looking for this pinky purple shade. This one looks more pink in the pan, but in the swatch, it definitely looks like a pinky purple. So again, we're going to take both of these images into consideration as I'm pulling out potential matches. We've got one Lethal Cosmetics shadow and a bunch of ColourPop singles as the potential contenders here. The Lethal shadow is really pretty, but maybe just a little bit too light. I'm looking for something with a little bit of that purple shift to it. And the shades Pick Me and Starchild both are quite pink, 
really too dark, too reddish. They don't have enough of that purple, shifty, lavender type of look. So Earthshine is the shadow that I ended up choosing here. I wish that I had something without as much blue shift, but when you see the overall finished product, it actually fits really nicely. Now for this minty matte shade, I have exactly one minty green matte eyeshadow. It's this ColourPop single called Looking Fresh, and thank goodness I even have one because <laughs> this is literally the only option. I'm going to swatch it for you just so that you can see, but it really ends up being a great match. It looks fantastic. I guess if I was going to have just one, this is the one to have. Right after the minty matte green shade, we have this quite bright saturated green shimmer. And whenever I'm looking at undertones for matching, think about what colors make up a green. So it's blue plus yellow is green. So is there more blue or more yellow? And this looks like a more blue green. The ratio of blue to yellow is more blue. So I'm going to focus on finding more blue based greens. I don't have a ton of great green shimmer options in this mid-toned blue based green vicinity. So I did end up pulling one really turquoise shade, Tiny Tangerines, just because I wanted to give myself a lot of options. And it worked out that Big Banks probably would have worked just fine. Tiny Tangerines is a little bit too blue, but this Lucid shade from Lethal is really right in the middle, just the perfect in between, not too blue, not too green. And when you see them swatched all together at the end, it really fits in nicely. So that's why I try to focus on those undertones. I think that helps me choose a better match. Now we are moving on to this red, which is a really pretty shade, but just doesn't, I don't understand why it's in a pastel palette, but it, it doesn't really matter. It seems a little out of place to me, but it looks good in the palette. So I guess that's all that really matters. We don't have to be so strict in our thinking of color stories that a pastel palette has to be only, only, only pastel. So, you know, it's fine. It's just, it feels odd. But anyway, we're looking for a red now. I have one ColourPop shade here and two from Terra Moons. True red shimmers are kind of hard to come by. And as I'm swatching here, you'll see that Cater to You definitely has a little bit of a pinky feel to it. Terra Sphere is really, really shifty red to yellow gold duochrome. And then the shade Bylar is a very orangey red. So there's no real perfect match for me in this group. So I ended up going with the one that I liked the best, which is Terrasphere. Just Bylar is too orangey. Cater to You could have been a good option, but I like the shift in Terrasphere and I think that it fits well with the rest of the palette. So that's why I went with that one just based on my own personal preference. And hey, that's the perk of building your own palette is you can tweak things if you want to. Now we have this peachy shade. This one will be very, very easy. I could over swatch. I could over choose. I could swatch probably 12 shadows in my collection because I have so many shades like this, a light peachy matte shade. So I decided to just pull out two that I think are going to be good contenders. I don't want to overthink it. I don't want to swatch to death on such a simple shade. So I pulled Centerfold and Wait For It. These are both from ColourPop. And Centerfold ended up being a little bit too bright and pinky. I definitely wanted something that was more peachy than pinky. So I decided to go with Wait For It just because Centerfold is a little too bright. Next, we have this blue, and I'm actually going to pull a bunch of blues and try to look for this blue and the light blue on the bottom row at the same time. 
because this is another category that I don't have a ton. I don't really have a bunch of pastel blues in my collection. So I think it will be pretty easy to knock out both of these shade dupes in one swatch. And I just think it will be very satisfying <laughs> at the end of the day to see all four of these shades swatched together. Moonlight, Lost and Found, and Piece of Cake are all ColourPop shadows, and then Lunar Haze is a Terra Moon shadow. You can see Lunar Haze is much too purpley, too lavender to fit into this particular palette. It is a pretty pastel, but it's not quite blue enough, so it turns out that Moonlight will be the perfect shade for that bottom row shadow and then piece of cake will fit into the center row. So there we go. One swatch knocked out two of our shades. That is what I call efficiency in palette building. Okay. <laughs> now we're moving down to the bottom row. We have this soft shimmery yellowy shade. I pulled a shadow from Terra Moons, one from ColourPop and one from Lethal. Let's give these a swatch and see how they perform on the skin because in the pan, these all look way more similar than they look applied to the skin. This Blowfish shade in particular from ColourPop is a lot more white looking and Inhabit from Lethal is also quite light. They're just not giving me quite enough yellow for what I'm looking for in terms of this palette. Now, Meteorite is super, super foily. It looks a lot more intense than the Natasha Denona picture, but again, we're taking some creative liberties here and I like it, so that's the one we're going with. Next up, we have this shifty blue-purple duochrome. It's definitely a purple base with a blue shift. I have a lot of shades that fit this category as well. I'm spoiled for choice with the purples. With the exception of Synth from Lethal, I think all three of these ColourPop singles look really, really similar in the pan, but once you see them swatched, you can see the differences in the shifts and the undertones. Fluff is the lightest from the ColourPop singles, and then Do or Doe is much more warm pinky red based and synth is way too light you can tell just looking at it it's too blue too light so that one's not going to work these color pop ones are pretty decent do or doe doesn't have enough of a shift and fluff is just a little bit too light for what i'm looking for so i think that this shade neutrino is going to be the right stand-in for our pastel palette for the second to last shade, we're looking for a bright acid green type of color. And again, I don't have a ton of shades like this in my collection. These are a couple of older ColourPop singles, Deja Vu and Keep Scrolling. And it's pretty clear to me as soon as I swatch these that Keep Scrolling is too white based. It's a little too neon yellow. We're definitely looking for something with some green to it. So Deja Vu ends up being the perfect color for this palette. We made it to the last shade. This is a pale pinky lavender shade. In the pan it looks more pink. In the swatch it definitely has some purple to it as well. So we want to make sure that we're paying attention to both of those pictures to choose the right color. This ended up being a serendipitous choice because I'm going to end up using Crossroads for that very first shade. Remember the rosy neutral pink that I just could not find the right match for? I hadn't even considered the shade Crossroads until I did this swatch. And you can see Crossroads is far too pink to be considered for this very purpley lavender shade. But Kittenfish ends up being a great match. It's a nice little pinky purple. And then I swapped out the very first shade for that Crossroads shade. So it ended up working out perfectly. Crossroads is maybe a little bit more cool toned, but I think in the context of this palette, it made more sense to go for a slightly more cool toned neutral pink option 
than the warmer peachier option that I had there before. And this is the time when you should pause, take a screenshot so that you can see all the shade with their shade names laid out here. This is the final product. I'm going to show you a close-up of my swatches first and then I'll do a side-by-side -side with the photo that I was working off of. Overall though, I think this is so beautiful, so pleasing. It's definitely a fun, colorful spring lineup. I also think that texturally my palette is more pleasing to my own eye personally than the swatches that I found of the pastel palette just because I went with more super foily duochrome type shades than you're going to see in the actual palette. Maybe, maybe not. I mean, all we have to go off of is this, you know, one edited photo that I found. But here's the side by side. I think it looks pretty darn close. Not exact dupes. That first pink, mine's a little cooler. The red, mine is not quite as red. It's more of a pinky shifty shade. But overall, I think that this looks really, really similar. You can definitely get a lot of the same looks. And, you know, like I said, in some cases, I think I like my choices a little bit better. But who knows? You know, I haven't really seen any real reviews or swatch photos or anything not from the brand. And the brand picture is clearly very highly edited, which is fine. It's to be expected. So you can't really tell. And maybe I'm more off base than... I think I am, but based on the photos that I had to go off of, I think this is a really close match. I'm very happy with how it turned out. What do you think? Is this close enough for you? Would you have made some other substitutions? Maybe edited out some colors? Let me know what you think about how this palette turned out. Let me know what you think about what you would tweak. I hope that you enjoyed this video and I really hope that this type of format inspires you to dive into your collection and get re-inspired by what you already have. Let me know which palettes you want to see inspired BYOPs with next. I always love to hear what you think about things too so leave all your thoughts down in the comments below. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye! You with me... Pa... Pal... <laughs> Nailed it. Ah, uh, oop, beep, 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 boop. Some of the, what is happening? I need some more caffeine, I think. Little BYOP together. Why did I say it like that? That was so weird. Uh, I thought about doing an eye look, but I'm already wearing a kind of pastel look today. And you know what? It just didn't happen this time around. But you can just use your inspired palette. And then when everybody gets the real one and starts doing tutorials, you can just follow along with theirs because they're probably going to come up with cooler looks than me anyway. That's not self-deprecating. I'm just playing to my strengths. Ooh, lunch is here. Yay, I gotta go. Love your face. Okay, bye. Thank you.